ordinary horse with a speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver. The Lone Ranger. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the oat cereal that's ready to eat, Betty Crocker mixes, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. Say, isn't there something pretty wonderful about the delicate flavor of fresh roasted peanuts? Doesn't it make you hungry just thinking about it? Well, now, you can enjoy this all-time flavor favorite in a brand new Betty Crocker cake mix. It's called Peanut Delight, and it really is a delight. It's the first cake mix ever made with butter from fresh roasted peanuts. What's more, into this mix, Betty Crocker has put the same fine ingredients you choose yourself, including famous softer silk cake flour and pure vegetable shortening. But best of all, new Peanut Delight cake mix is made with real peanut butter. That gives the cake its wonderful, delicate flavor of fresh roasted peanuts. Mmm, -hmm. it sounds too good to miss. So try it. It's more fun than a circus and more delicious than you can imagine. Next time Mom goes shopping, ask her to please get the new Betty Crocker cake mix, Peanut Delight. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, Victor. I am Silver. Hooray! Shortly before noon, Clarabelle Hornblow and her top hand, Thunder Martin, were the only customers in the bank in Copper City. Clarabelle had just paid her mortgage. Well, let's get out of here, Thunder. Yeah. I have a lot of shopping to do and I want to get it off. Step back inside, Wait, ladies. Hey, what's, uh, uh, what's the idea? Inside, mister, and set lively. Man, man. Three of them. Don't try racing for guns. You're covered, so keep your hands high. And that goes for you two fellas behind the counter, too. Now, don't shoot my hands here. Keep them there. While your pal fills these canvas sacks with cash and gold. Yes, sir. Yes. Make it fast. Yes. Boys, keep your eyes open. Don't worry. All right, come on, hurry it up. Anyone Wait, who man. tries to pass move yeah. will die sudden. Dirty, Stephen. You on. keep your hands up, lady, and you'll not get hurt. Oh, here, here's the money. I'll hide your hands. They're up. We're backing out of here. We'll drill the first man who comes after us. And that goes for you, too, lady. I just hope the sheriff's waiting outside for all of you. <laughs> the sheriff's eating lunch right now. By the time he finds out there's been a robbery, we'll be out of town. Let's go, boys. As the three masked men back toward the door, Thunder Martin's right hand dropped to his holster. Ozark saw the move. Oh, you're Let's go on, boys. <laughs> As Clarabelle dropped to her knees beside the wounded foreman, the bank robbers raced to the hitch rail, swung to the backs of their waiting horses, and hurried away. By the time the sheriff and his deputies reached the street and opened fire, the four men were on their way out of town. A moment later, the fleeing riders rounded the corner of the deserted building. They'll have to shoot through the building to get us. They'll get horses and start after us in a few minutes. We'll separate and travel in pairs. Take them. Do it, Jordy, head west. Right. Just as I'll meet you for check on Furnace River in a couple of days to split the loop. And see if it's to cover your tracks. Turn the old oh, 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 oh. Get up, get up. Meanwhile, Sheriff Dugan and Pete Winter, the president of the bank, entered the building. As he closed the door firmly against a crowd of curious townsmen, the sheriff said, Pete, talk to the cashiers. Find out what was stolen. Right, Sheriff. Now, I'm all right, Thunder, you damn ratty junkhead. What fire six-year-old child that had more sense than to try drawn against three-armed barmen like those? Now, lay still, Thunder, till Doc Jenkins comes to look at the wound. Uh, but, but, but I'm not hurt that bad. Did you stop a bullet, Thunder? Oh, I... 
just got a scratch, Sheriff. It's nothing serious. Mm-hmm. Anyone else hurt? Nah. Wonder well, wouldn't have been hurt either, Sheriff, if he kept his hands away from his gun. Oh, Two deputies and a couple of townsmen went after those fellows. I, I hope they get them. Oh, while I examine your wounds, Thunder, tell me what you know about the robbery. There's not much to tell, Sheriff. Clarabelle and I were the only customers in the bank. Yep, I just paid off my mortgage. We were heading for the door when those three gents busted in. I see. Their faces were covered with bandanas. They all held guns. East of Copper City, Desperell and Ozark slowed their horses to a walk. Easy now, easy. And guided the animals into a shallow creek. Come on, come on, come on, easy. Yeah. We've taken any lawmen who are after us, yes? We covered our tracks so well, it'll take them a long time to pick up our trail. Just the same, we're taking no chances. We'll stay in the creek as long as we can. Hey, hey, no! As Jeff spoke, his mare stepped into a hole in the bed of the stream and fell, throwing the outlaw from the saddle. As Ozark drew rein and dismounted nearby, Jeff stood up. What happened? That locoed mare fell. She must have stepped into a hole. Oh, shoot her. Shoot her and be done with it. Now, take it easy. Should have known better than to ride that base. She's scared of her own saddle. You hurt? Well, get to the bottom of the creek. Mighty hard. Clothes are soaking wet. I reckon I didn't break any bones. Well, I'll take a look at your face. You picked a fine time to get skittish. There's a hole in the bed of the creek right here, Jess. She stepped into it. Yeah, she would. You'll not be able to travel fast from now on. What? Let's see for yourself. Right. You'll have to leave her here. Let me see here. Yeah, you're right. Put the saddlebags on my horse. I gotta have a horse. We'll get one. Where? The ranch about a mile from here. We'll steal one there. But if the posse catches up to us before we get there, we'll have to take that chance. The lame mare stood quietly with her head bowed as Jess Sorrell removed the saddlebags full of stolen money. A few minutes later, the two outlaws left the creek. Come on, boy, get up. Come on, man. Traveling the foot, not my style. Get up and watch the ground. For what? To make sure we leave no tracks. Keeping to the shelter of trees as much as possible, the two outlaws moved over hard packed ground for some time. Then Ozark saw Clarabelle Hornblow's ranch ahead. Hey, you see, Jess? Told you we were near a ranch. Let's hope we find some good horses there. We'll take what we need. When they reached the ranch house, Jeff looked toward the empty corral a short distance away. Oh, there. Oh, no horses in there, Ozak. Yeah, the critters might be out on the range. There's only one way to find out. Huh? We go into the house and ask questions. Yeah, it looks to me like no one's home, Jeff. We'll go around to the back door. Maybe someone's in the kitchen. Leaving Ozark's horse ground hitched at the kitchen door, the two outlaws went inside. Within a few minutes, they knew the ranch house was empty. As they returned to the big kitchen, Jeff muttered, Doggone that our luck turned muddy all of a sudden, Ozark. Uh, I thought for sure we'd find at least one horse here. I reckon they're all out on the range, like you said. Hey, listen. What? Riders heading this way. Uh, maybe whoever owns this spread's coming back. Look out the window. Look at the paint he's riding. Hey, that horse is fast. Fast and strong. Hey, the engine's coming inside, Jess. That suits me fine. As soon as he steps through the door, let him have it with your gun barrel. As he strode toward Clarabelle's kitchen door, the Lone Ranger's Indian friend, Toto, glanced at the two saddlebags on the back of the big black horse, ground-hitched nearby. 
He hesitated for a moment outside the open door, then entered, calling, Arabelle, you home? Let him have it. Right. <clears throat> Ozark's gun barrel came down hard on Toto's head. The Indian fell to the floor unconscious. He's out cold yet. Gag him and put ropes on him before he comes to. Right. And be sure the ropes are plenty tight. Hey, where are you going? To take the saddlebags off that paint. As soon as I put mine on him, we'll be set to travel. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. When Bill's at bat, the kids all shout, you can't strike that slugger out. He gets a hit because he knows he's got gold power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got gold power. There he goes. <laughs> he's stealing his Cheerios, Cheerios, Cheerios. Sure, Cheerios, the cereal that's fun to eat because it's shaped like little letter O's. The only ready-to-eat oat cereal with this fresh toasted oat flavor. And listen, every delicious spoonful of Cheerios and milk is real muscle-building food. Each spoonful contains vitamins, minerals, and proteins your body needs. Yes, the good things in a Cheerios breakfast do good things for your body. Help you have healthy nerves, good red blood, strong bones and muscles. Yes, Cheerios is made to give you real go power. So every morning, get going and keep going with Cheerios. Then you'll hear people say, He's stealing his Cheerios. Now to continue. A short time later, as the Lone Ranger rode cross country toward Clarabelle Hornblow's ranch to meet Toto, he saw familiar tracks on the ground. Oh, oh, easy, steady, big fellow. The tracks of two horses were some distance from the stream where Jeff had fallen. And as the masked man studied them, he realized the outlaw he wanted had passed that way. We found Jeff Sorrell's tracks again, Silver. As the Lone Ranger studied the tracks, he heard the sound of approaching hoofbeats. Yeah, that may be Thunder Martin and Clarabelle, Silver. We're not far from the Hornblow Ranch. But the riders who emerged from the screaming brush and trees were townsmen who had been following the trail of the bank robbers. Their guns were drawn, and as they advanced, they fired warning shots. Those shots will let you know we need business, mister. Realizing he couldn't reach the cover of nearby cottonwood trees in time to avoid being hit by a bullet, the Lone Ranger stood motionless. Get your hands up and keep high. Oh, 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 yeah, I figured to give us a slip by splitting up and traveling separately, huh? Well, what are you talking about? The bank robbery. You and your masked friends pulled this news. Robbery? You know more about it than we do. But you can tell what you know to the law when you get back to town. I've committed no crime. Save your lies. We followed you and your pal from town. We lost the trail a couple of times. Are but... these the tracks you were following? For a moment, the townsmen looked from the masked man to the ground. They saw the tracks of two riders. But they didn't see the Lone Ranger's split-second draw. Now, holster your guns and tell me more about the robbery. The sight of two coats leveled for action unnerved the posse men. Well, you, you're fast. Fast enough. Uh, too fast to trade lead with. A, uh, I'll host the master shooter. What about you? Yeah, I, I don't want gunplay. Nor do I. But you're holstering your gun. I'm on your side of the law. There's only one masked man I know of on the right side of the law. That man's a friend of Clarabelle Hornblow. I was on my way to the Hornblow Ranch when I saw these tracks. You're the Lone Ranger? Yes. Great day alive, mister. I, I'm sorry we mistook you for an outlaw, but, but that man... That's that... all right. How many men took part in the bank robbery you mentioned? Four. Three men are riding with Jeff Sorrell. Well, who's Sorrell? An outlaw I've been trailing for three weeks. He's wanted in Missouri. You think he robbed the bank? Yes, if these are his tracks. They're the same as the ones we followed from town. Come on, we'll keep after them. Easy, right. steady, big fellow. Get up, get up, get up. A short time later, the Lone Ranger and the riders who introduced themselves as Chuck and Slim reached Bottleneck Creek. A buckboard was on the far side of the stream, and beside it stood Clarabelle Hornblow and Thunder Martin. The buxom ranch owner and her top hand were examining Jeff Sorrell's injured mare. After they greeted the masked man warmly, Clarabelle said, Mr. Where's Tonto? We uh, separated two days ago to try to pick up Jeff Sorrell's trail, Clarabelle. 
I plan to meet him at your place this afternoon. This man thinks just your element gang robbed the bank, Clarabelle. This bay belongs to one of the bank robbers. Oh, no. Thunder and I recognized the critter. We saw it standing outside of the bank during the robbery. Yeah, poor things hurt her leg. I plan to take her to my place where she'll have plenty of good grazing and rest till the leg heals. She's a mighty fine horse. Look how she takes to me, Thunder. Yeah, poor critter's muzzling your shoulder. You've made a friend, Clarabelle. Bay's too good for outlaw skunks like the ones who robbed the bank. Uh, look at these tracks. Hey, one horse came out of the stream here. Two men on foot were with it. That means the two men walked. The horse probably carried two saddlebags. Easy city big fella. The tracks will be easy to follow from now on. Slim and I'll stay with you, mister, till you get those fools here. Then let's go. Come on, Come on get up. Get up. Get up. tracks were difficult to see, but having followed the gang for several weeks, the Lone Ranger knew the tricks they used to conceal their trail. Slowly but surely, he and the men with him approached the ranch, while Clarabelle drove the buckboard, and Thunder walked alongside, leading the injured mare. When Thunder and Clarabelle entered the ranch kitchen some time later, the Lone Ranger had already freed Tonto. With wide-eyed amazement, Clarabelle listened to the Indian story. Me look two days for track a gang north of here, but not find them. So me come here to meet you, Kimasabi. Me come into the kitchen, and someone hit me on head. You mean the skunks were in here, in my kitchen? That's right, Clarabelle. Me come to, tied, gang. Me look outside, see scouts gone. I saw your saddlebags on the ground at the door. Cook put their saddlebag on scout. Then right him away. Why, well, the dirty horse, the... Uh, how's your head, Toto? It's all right, but me feel better when we find Scout. I'm going after him now, Toto. Follow my trail if Clarabelle will lend you a horse. You know, doggone well, I'll lend him one, mister. Thunder and I'll get one off the range and have him ready to ride inside of 10, 15 minutes. Good. I'll see you later, Toto. Now, oh, wait a minute, mister. We'll go with you. You'd better ride to town to report to the sheriff. He's a big fella. The tracks from the ranch were clear and easy to follow. And as the masked man rode, he repeated Scout's name. We've got to find him, Silver. Understand, big fellow? We've got to find Scout. The mighty horse quickened his pace as if he were in a hurry to find the missing paint. But the lone ranger wasn't sure he understood until Scout's tracks disappeared. Then he gave Silver his head. Go on, Silver. Without guidance, the great white stallion followed a trail the masked man couldn't see. The trail of a faithful friend and comrade. Come on, Silver! That night, Jeff Sorrell and Ozark made camp under a moonless sky. Scout and Ozark's big black were tied to nearby trees. And as they spread their blankets near a small campfire, Ozark asked, Where's the saddlebag with the money, Jeff? Right here beside me. Mm. I wonder where Paycoat and Shorty are now. Yeah, probably halfway to the hideout. Unless they lost as much time as we did. In a way, I'm glad my bay went lame, Ozark. You were lucky to get a horse as fine as that paint. Been on the lookout for a long time for a horse as fast and strong as he is. Hey, what's that? Ah, the paint's restless. You'll settle down. Well, wake me in a couple hours, Ozark. And I'll stand watch while you sleep. You'll get no sleep tonight, Hey, sir. hey what? You're covered. So don't try reaching for those guns. Who are you? Where are you? The firelight makes you perfect targets. But he's back in the tree. Well, get him. No, no. I told you not to reach for a gun. Oh, my hand is busted. If you try a fast oh. move, I'll break your arm, Jeff. Oh. Well, I can't shoot it, Shadow. Oh, show yourself. Oh. Cover them, Shadow, while I take the guns. He uh, got them covered. But uh, there's two of you. Yeah. And you're mad. That's right. Uh, who are you? We've never met, but you'll recognize my friend. Ah. You take good looks with it. You come after his horse. Now, now, wait a minute, mister. 
I admit we took the Redskins' paint, but that's no reason to hold hard feelings. Fellas who steal horses, hang. No, no. Where's the rest of your gang? Uh, gang? That's right. I, I, I don't know what you're talking about. In that case, we'll take you two back to Copper City before we look for your friends. Early the next morning, Toto and the Lone Ranger returned to Copper City with their prisoners and the stolen money. As he took charge of the outlaws and led the way to the cell block, Sheriff Dugan chuckled. Uh, your pals are here waiting for you, Jess. What pals? <laughs> You'll see. Jess! Who's that? Shorty. Paco. Surprised to see him, huh? Well, my boys and I captured them yesterday a short distance from town. Now we've got your whole gang. What happened to you two? I reckon we didn't do a good job of covering our tracks, Jess. Inside, Jess. You too, Ozark. All right, all right. Well, see you later, men. <laughs> How come the law captured you and Ozark, Jess? We wouldn't have been captured if Jess's bay hadn't gone lame. Couldn't you find another horse? Sure, I found another one, all right. Fast, strong pain. If he was fast and strong, how come the law captured you? Go on, Jess. Tell him who owned the critter. <laughs> we found out too late the paint belonged to Tondo. Hmm? Who's Tonto? The engine pal of the Lone Ranger. Feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is produced by Pendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Boy. Listen to the Lone Ranger, brought to you by Special Recording.